If you think you've got one long-term memory store, you're selling yourself short. The long-term memory store, initially alluded to in the 1890s and formalized into Atkinson and Schifrin's multi-store model of memory in the 1960s, is not a unified memory store. It's not unified anatomically, and it's not unified cognitively either. Endel Tolving presented a triptych of long-term memories. Tolving's three types of long-term memory are procedural, semantic, and episodic memories. Procedural memory is the element responsible for knowing how to do things. It's the unconscious and therefore non-declarative part of long-term memory. Memory of motor skills such as riding a bike, catching a ball, and typing are all stored in procedural memory. Information about the world around us is stored in semantic memory. The semantic memory store allows us to remember the meanings of words, as well as other socially relevant facts about the world. China is a country on the continent of Asia. Spaghetti is a type of pasta. It's not personal, but semantic memory is conscious thought and is declarative. And Tolving's third type of long-term memory is episodic memory, responsible for storing information about events that we have experienced in our lives. Like semantic memory, episodic memory is conscious and declarative. However, episodic memory is distinct from the other two stores due to its personal nature. If you can remember your first kiss, then you're using your episodic memory. For a cognitive model such as this to be valid, researchers must be able to demonstrate that the elements of the triptych are distinct from each other. In other words, it should be possible to prove that each of the three elements exists independently of the other two components. Cohen and Squire simplified Tolving's conception of memory into two distinct categories, declarative and procedural memories. Declarative memory involves knowing a piece of information that can be consciously brought to mind and declared, whereas procedural memory refers to a memory for process, knowing how to do something. This binary distinction between declarative and procedural memories is supported by research on patients with amnesia. Amnesic patients are able to recall procedural and declarative memories acquired before the onset of the syndrome. However, following the onset of amnesia, patients were unable to store new episodic or semantic memories, but were able to acquire new skills such as learning to drive a car, which relies on procedural memory. Tolving developed the cognitive study of memory beyond a unified concept of long-term memory, and subsequent research has lent support for distinct types of long-term memory. If you've read any additional studies investigating the structure of long-term memory, please share your thoughts in the comments. And as always, make sure you're subscribed to Psychology Unlocked to stay up to date with the latest videos.